Welcome to the Pure Light Project podcast. My name is Andrea Mai, and this podcast is really about uh, two things. I do what I can to help people shine their light, and I have conversations with people who are really shining beautifully in the world and doing things that I feel are impactful for humanity in some way. And so today, my guest is David Dennis, and David and I met in Dallas at an event, and I've just had such a great time getting to know him more. And uh, as the uh, tragically failed gardener in a long line of uh, gardeners, including family who made their living from it, and uh, hearing about his product extra grow and the the whole like way it came about it's like it's given me hope that I can live up to my family legacy <laughs> this year this year so so David welcome uh to the pure light project podcast well thank you Andrea I appreciate it and it's been wonderful getting to know you since Dallas as well and uh, obviously, um, I look forward to many other opportunities to spread the light and the love and and get as much nutrition into the dirt as possible. That's that's really our premise and our mission because um, of my concept, nutrient stacking, uh, where the more nutrition you put into the dirt, the more nutrition the plants can bring up out of the dirt into the animals or the humans that eat them. So I believe it helps with... Uh, um, the old philosophy, food is medicine. And with that ancient philosophy of quality food uh, makes for quality medicine. So the higher the quality you put in, the higher the quality you get out. And that's that's the main premise behind Extra Grow. Yeah, and that's so beautiful too, because uh, you know the, the way our bodies feel I, just a couple days ago, I had the first meal in a long time where I actually felt nourished. I actually felt satisfied. You know, it felt, I felt complete when I got done eating it. And, it, you know, there's other reasons behind why that was, but I know that it was f so fascinating to f recognize that I haven't been, like, I really haven't been feeling that and didn't realize it until I did have that deep awareness in my body of, oh, I can, I can feel differently. Cause I growing up, right. My family, like I said, we, we raised all of our own uh, food. They, they, I, I felt nourished as a kid and it was only as an adult that I started, like I, I, I started to gain a lot of weight cause I just kept eating and eating and eating you know, and all of these things never felt satisfied, never felt really optimal. And um, recognizing moving from like, I grew up in a very rural area, and then moving to the city and starting to buy everything at, at the grocery stores. And man, you just, it doesn't matter how good it is. It doesn't matter how clean it is. There's never a, a real deep satisfaction in my body. And so when I met you, and heard you talking about this, I was like, wow, this isn't just a product. This is a product with a lot of care and consideration into it. And so I would really like you to share, um, where did it start? Sure. Where did it start? Why, why did it even come into existence? Well, um, that's, that's, that's a bit of a story, but it really boils down to in 2007, uh, I recognized that most of our food products were being offshore or outsourced and that the quality of the average food product was declining. So I decided to refocus my efforts onto bringing back nutrition density and the bioavailability for foods and feeds, uh, literally for plants, animals, and humans. And that's the uh, term, while well, you see on our bags, the term premium organic. And so premium organic stands for 100% plant-based, non-chemical, non-waste product, non-manures. It, it's truly the highest quality we know how to produce. And we're seeking to improve our quality at all times because being quality focused and nutrient 
density focused, bioavailability focused, were speaking to what you did, which is that sense of fulfillment. When you, we, it's it's kind of funny, um, I because we grow a lot, obviously here in our own home. But most people think I, I mean, just yesterday I had a, a five-star chef wanting to come to our house and and work in our fields to understand the the quality of the food that we grow because he could taste the difference immediately, he could smell the difference. Mm. And he's like, This is amazing. I want to come work for you and learn from you. And I and I laughed and he was like, Well, I, I really mean it. I'll work hard. And I'm like, I understand, but what you don't understand is that for my house. I grow on a third of an acre and I grow about 125 plants in pots in my backyard and we're covered with trees. So I'm constantly moving these little one and two gallon pots around to follow the sunlight. And yeah, we do harvest enough to make our own pepper powder and we make, we grow our own lettuce gardens and we grow our own rosemary and parsley and sage and thyme and oregano and, 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 uh, butter pie, plea flour, and, and our own squashes. And we've got all these things going, but it's small little amounts. It's enough for the five or six of us um, to eat off of and enjoy the quality and the flavor, but it's not enough for, you know, the true, you know, turn it into a market community grow. And so that's really where it started. I was growing our own medicinal herbs and teas and spices because I couldn't get the quality I wanted um, I had trained before in as in five star fine dining, and I know a lot of Escoffier chefs. And the flavor that I grew up with as a child just wasn't there anymore um, mm -hmm. through the depletion of our soils. And so, I came at it from a different approach. I was like, well, if we had depleted soils that created a lower quality plant, what if we improved the quality of the soil to get a higher quality plant? So I started thinking of a plant as a parasite. And I started thinking of soil as a living creature. So if we took the dirt and we fed it the highest quality product we possibly could, we'd create a super healthy soil. And then the plants that were the parasites, so to speak, would thrive on a healthy soil. And then the idea of the nutrition stacking came in because most of the plants that we then harvest that become extra grow are grains and seeds and other legumes and such. Mm -hmm. So it's that higher quality grain and seed, the embryo of the plant would be healthier once it's grown on extra grow. So growing extra grow using extra grow as our goal, we get to about 250,000 bags a year of production. We'll be able to actually incorporate that. So we should see a constantly improving product over the years. So I highly recommend that the more we get going, the more you'll be able to see us improve as we start growing extra grow using extra grow. So it's truly regenerative. A bag yeah. of extra grow should be able to grow about a hundred bags of extra grow. Isn't that so achieving that's... abundance to create abundance to create more abundance? Yeah. So that's nutrient, really I, I think density. I was missing that piece of it. Um nutrient we... density and bioavailability, meaning there's there's more amino acids by weight in a bag of extra grow mm -hmm. than there is in sirloin steak. It's super density of protein. And that's why you'll see me play around once in a while and open a bag and say, look, it's edible and I'll take a bite of it because it truly is a, a high quality organic food for the soil. Now it tastes a little like somebody put grass in your granola cereal. So <laughs> I don't recommend it from that perspective, but it is an edible product because we start with the highest grade we can get. And then we run yeah. it through a process. It's, um, exploding the the plant water itself that structured water within the plant biome we bring it to a high pressure at low temperature and then explode it that creates the molecule molecular structure to be a bioavailable within the dirt so that microbes and earthworms and everything else are given the las vegas buffet of a food supply so they all start to thrive at once and then it's designed to work in all fit five of the major biomes here in america to feed that microbiome, the rhizome layer, I call it a rhizome enhancer. And then it will self-balance. As the food supply of extra grow runs out, you've regenerated that rhizome layer to function naturally in the biome that it's in. So when Captain Planet's growing um, 
uh, co- he did collard green grow down in South Florida, and he gets collard greens the size of his chest. That's a different biome than growing um, oregano here in Texas or growing, um, uh, what did uh, Bob Larson grow up in Michigan, uh, president of Knapp Partners USA? He, uh, he did a tomato grow up in Michigan with inoculated biochar mixed with extra grow, and his tomato plants doubled in size overnight. Uh, he amazing. posted a Facebook Live on it, and I was like, oh, if you hadn't done it on Facebook Live, I doubt anybody would have believed you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the results are amazing. Plants thrive on quality nutrition. So the more we give them, the more they thrive. Yeah. So let's break this down a little for people who maybe aren't familiar with some of these terms. Sure. Um, so the uh, when we speak about the the way basically what you're speaking of is the way that the 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 dirt and the plants can actually receive it's you're creating something so that they can then it makes it receivable by by the plants you're you've created like you're blowing up the water molecules and you're um making the product itself so that it's easily digestible basically by what's di- what's receiving it right that's the microbiome the bacteria uh the fungi the the mushroom network mm-hmm. mycelium networks yeah. uh earthworms pill bugs everything that's a vital part of making a full living soil has a food supply built into extra grow so extra grow was designed to make gardening easy because i was growing in my own yard and i had I found about all these, um, let's just say less than desirable pathogenic bacteria in the local chicken feeds and the local cow manures and so on Mm -hmm. that were then causing food problems in the garden. And I like to literally eat out of my own garden. I don't like to have to run into the house, wash everything thoroughly and such. I'll just reach down and pick it out of my garden. So. Um, I don't want to then incorporate pathogenic bacteria into the feed. So I was just growing without, and I was looking for ways to create a supply that would not introduce pathogenic bacteria. So that's where extra grows basic foundation came from is the ability to grow herbs in your own garden without using manure and without using chemical fertilizers or other forms of pesticides or, or, you know, toxins. So or or that's, doing that's what foundation. I do, which is just you know, here's some water, sweetheart. Please grow, you know, um, because all of that stuff I don't want it on my food, you know. And then it's everything's lacking. the The whole system is fatigued yeah. before it even begins. It's um, funny. One of our our most common uh, when we look at our customer base, and every, you know, everybody these days has a handle, right? Our, one of our most common handles has something to do with black thumb gardener <laughs> our, our customer base. I'd say probably six or 7% of our customers have some form of black thumb gardener or, or you know, black gardener or whatever in yeah. their, in their, but they're some of our favorite customers and yeah. uh, people are now bragging on them and their handles are still black thumb gardener. And uh, one of the local ones, I won't mention her name, but she had three harvests of tomatoes last year and was making tomato sauce for the entire neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, I was just, you know, excited for her. She because, probably became uh, very popular. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. You say specifically tomato sauce, right? Um, I grew up with, we, we home canned our own tomatoes, right? And then as an adult, you know, I haven't really had that ability to, I, I wasn't growing them well myself a few for fresh eating and then nothing home canned. And this fall we found some, I I think they're from an Amish farmer nearby, some jarred tomatoes. And like the flavor is like what I remember, you know, as a kid, like it is so good. There's no taste of a can anywhere. (laughs) You know, there's no metallic. Satisfying. Yeah. Oh, just and the smell, the aroma of it. Right. I used to be quite a foodie (laughs) and then it's just become, it's almost impossible to even create something satisfying for the last decade, you know? And so to, 
know that that you've had you cared enough first for your family you know and for your community and then you've extrapolated that to how can we get this into everybody's home that wants it you know that's a that's a big leap that's a big leap now what I know about you is you're a big leap sort of individual you know (laughs) you have big visions I would love to hear you talk about about that vision you know about what you hope that this will do for for families and communities well i'd really like to see a mindset shift between the scarcity mindset and abundance and i believe we can take lessons from our past uh for instance um when the crisis the cuban missile crisis happened and President Kennedy enforced an embargo on the island of Cuba. What happened was everyone started their own backyard gardens, rooftop gardens and such again. Because of the, of the incredible scarcity, everybody started growing to not have that risk of starvation. Well, even in Miami today, you can see Cuban immigrants, they all have gardens because it hasn't been that long that their parents or their grandparents had had that scarcity issue in the 60s, and therefore they want to have that local food supply. Mm -hmm. I believe that an abundance mindset so that everybody can have their own herbs and medicine from their food, you don't have to grow a bunch, grow a little. I get all my Serrano peppers off of one one gallon pot per year because we go through maybe 55 or 60 peppers a year yeah. and that's what that one plant grows yeah um last year or two years ago we grew a pink girl tomato plant one plant and we got 235 pounds of harvest off of one plant so the beauty <laughs> of the abundance of extra grow is yeah. we get we get customers that do what we call the extra grow challenge So hashtag extra grow challenge and they'll post before and after pictures or they'll post their harvests and they'll tell people about their story of how extra grow worked for them. One of my favorites was um, Miss Teen Pennsylvania, uh, Miss Julia Meckley. Uh, She saw one of my posts about uh, promoting victory gardens back in October of, uh, I want to say it was 2018, 2019. And I was promoting on our Facebook site, start a victory garden. Please start a garden for yourself. It doesn't have to be big. It can be in an apartment complex in a few pots. Just start something so that you can feel comfortable about your ability to grow. And we challenge folks to do a side-by-side with us versus anything else. And she chose to do a side-by-side in Philadelphia, no less. This is not the Southern climb. This is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So she chose to do side by side grow with extra grow versus a Spoma garden tome, another organic fertilizer product versus extra grow premium organic. And she did a side by side trial with eggplant. And then she was very scientific, very meticulous. She's, you know, has a, has a strong science background. And so she weighed by gram the produce on each harvest Mm-hmm. And if I recall, the first harvest on the Swoma Garden Tome side was 377 grams of eggplant, whereas on the extra grow side, it was 1,100 and I believe 32 grams of eggplant, two fruits that weighed twice as much as the one fruit. So the percentage increase on first yield was 377% increased in production of produce. Yeah. Now, that changes the metric of people thinking about growing in their backyard. If you can actually grow abundance, if you go scale that to farmers, if you could get three to four times more yield for the same amount of grow, we don't have a food supply issue. We have a scarcity mindset. Well, and the other side of that too, right? You have these big, beautiful plants in a smaller amount but the phrase you've said a couple of times right the nutrient density of these products right so you're not only having a healthy healthy plant that's 
like a lot of fruit or vegetable, much larger output, but also the nutritional impact of of the person for the person eating it is so much greater, you know, um, like that's just all around beautiful. Have you guys done any uh, measurement or testing on that yet? Or is that in the Yes, world? actually, um, we see quite a bit. Um, there's been some white papers done by third parties. Because we're a commercial for-profit entity, We it doesn't pay us, in, in my estimation, it's not the best idea for us to sponsor a study. I'd rather a nonprofit or a third party do it. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, let's see, I can pull up uh let's see i think this will show here we go i'll get myself out of the picture here here's an example of a third party uh this was done by a woman in denton that's up at the university of north texas she calls herself the Ex experiential gardener and this is a side-by-side -side grow she did with swiss chard and some pansies uh with her standard organic medium versus extra grow and I want to say she used maybe two teaspoons of extra grow on a side-by-side. Okay. -side. Okay. And as you can see, um, quite a difference in result in the yield and the quality. Mm -hmm. But there's also white papers of, uh, oh, here's Julia Meckley's grow. Here it is. Um, this is the Espoma Garden Tone plant on the left versus the extra grow plant on the right. And it's a little, it's out of the frame. You can't really see it, how tall it gets. But you can see another interesting thing. See the Espoma garden tome? There's little holes in the leaf yes. where pests have feasted on it. And if you look at the extra growth side, there's very few. Yes. Even side by side, pests will choose the weaker plant. So oh, um, as far as third-party studies, there's a study that I'm, um, I'm currently reading whereby it's been proven that higher quality soil yields higher nutrition in plants. So anytime you can improve the soil, you can improve the nutritional density in the plant matter itself. Okay. And I don't know of anyone yet that has been able to achieve a higher density of soil nutrition than what we do. Yeah. So our goal is we take, you know, the highest quality organic components that are not touched by industrial waste manufacturing. They haven't been through an animal. They're not manures. There's no chemical additives. We don't extract oil with hexane or any of those things. This is all mechanically based, water-based uh, plants, you know, legumes, uh, grains, uh, extracts, and compressions, mostly explosion technology or dehydration technologies to concentrate because we're activated by water. So we have to get the water out. Otherwise, we'd never be able to ship it anywhere. Uh, some people also ask us why we are, are so premium organic, but yet we sell in this shiny Mylar bag. And it's because we haven't yet found a bag that can handle the airtight, moisture tight uh, that we need to qualify for selling it in retail stores. Because most of the uh, uh, retailers out there, you know, um, nurseries and plant shops and so on, have outdoor displays. And um, you get a couple of ounces, you, you get even a few drops of, the, of water into a bag of extra grow, it'll start growing in terms <laughs> of the bag. You'll get mushrooms starting to grow. You'll get uh, all kinds of things happening, uh, molds, all kinds of things that'll grow because it's got such high food. And no matter what, there's always a little spore here or there in the atmosphere. Sure. And we don't pack it in a clean room. We pack it in a, in a, in a, organic food production facility or, you know, some form of a clean, you know, using food grade production techniques. So you're going to have one or two spores of a mushroom floating around the air naturally. So yeah. when you combine water and food with one of those spores, you'll end up with something growing. <laughs> and hence you need the right packaging, you know, and this is what's available at this time to, right. To to make it so if you can find a nice bioplastic pioneer that is working in and can create bags for us that would then degrade over time instead of you know we'd like them to be able to be shelf stable for about two years 
once you open a bag of extra grow, you should use it within six months because the humidity in your environment can then concentrate inside the bag through heat and cold cycles of the humidity and then create growth within the bag. So, yeah. but once it's the way it's closed up and sealed dry as it is, it's good for years. You know, it probably anywhere from five to 10 years, it could sit on the shelf until you open it. That's amazing. So I want to go back and touch on something um, because, you know, I, I'm getting ready to put my order in and I'm like, how much of this do I need? And you said something in one of the photos you, you shared that there was two teaspoons used. So this isn't like a potting soil. This is more of an additive that you would, what I put in my order, it arrives and what do I do? How how am I using extra grow in my garden so that I can overcome the infamy of my black thumb? You know, how do I do this, David? <laughs> can do. Um, I'll see if I can pull up uh, some instructions off of here because I know I've got some. They're on the back of the bag, uh, but I believe I've also got some here I could load up uh, to answer and, and load it as well. So um, the point of it is, is that it turns dirt into soil. Okay, that's the easiest way to say it. Mm, sure. Let's see if I can, uh, well, kind of. Okay. So um, this isn't the whole thing. It kind of cropped it off. But one to two cups for 25 square foot, heavily water it in until you see the product mixing with the top layer of the soil. And it notice I was talking about mold or fungus mm -hmm. develop. Just rake it gently, water it again. You just want to get the nutrients deeper in the soil. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the purpose of extra grow is to enhance the, the soil layer itself. You're, you're turning the dirt into a soil. So it works with any kind of soil. It works, it enhances the humic and fulvic qualities. It helps stabilize moisture. It helps balance pH. If your soil is too acidic, it'll lower it. If it's too alkaline, it'll raise it. It's designed to, to be a harmonic balancer. It'll improve variation of, of clay soils. It will um, hold moisture of uh, dry soils, but it'll only hold so much and create aeration for wet soils. If your soil's too wet, it'll actually even start fermenting. It'll start a fermentation process and eat up any excess carbohydrates in the soil and such to that helps aerate your soil. It does a lot of different things, and that's why it's, I don't give away the recipe, is it's got a lot of different plant matter in it, but it's all plants, grains, and legumes, and biochar that's designed to feed the fungal network, mycelium network, to provide aeration. Uh, even, it even has a little yellow warning on the back that says not to be used with seedlings or to germinate, and that's because we've incorporated um, the ability for the top layer to be a desiccation mulching layer, meaning the top one to two millimeters will actually dry out and form a crust. So if you're familiar with no-till farming, that's what you want. It helps prevent weed seed germination. Well, if you're also trying to like get some carrot seeds to start, um, it's not going to work so well because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to prevent the carrot seeds from starting. So you can get around that just by, uh, there's two techniques that have been very successful. One is when you're doing the germination, you just keep it watered twice a day, real misty. So it keeps it moist and you won't have that issue. And the other is, if you're growing a larger area, you can add some topsoil that doesn't have extra grow right where you put the seed. Okay. So you can create like a one inch circle of topsoil that doesn't have extra grow in it. Put your seed in that. Once it germinates and the roots start to spread out, it'll take advantage of that extra grow rhizome layer. But that one little square inch won't be desiccated the way it would be if everything had been treated equally. Interesting. Interesting. So to answer your further question, yeah, the amount of extra grow is based on how heavily the plant feeds. Okay, we've tested. Uh, I've had a nurser locally test it on like shrubs, and shrubs are very low feeding. They use very little, and he got extremely good results. But it was pretty similar to another product that he had used because again, it was very low feeding. But when you try it on a plant like tomatoes or bell peppers or something that's a really heavy feeder, mm -hmm. you get exponential results. So we don't market the results 
we it depends on the plant. It's very specific to what the plant can maximize at. But you'll see other changes. For instance, my uh, I have post oak trees in the backyard, and uh, the post oak, the leaves on the post oak are now the size of my hand. You know, they're literally leaf structure, and the veins pop, and you'll see extra yeah. curvature. Uh, they dump tons of acorns now. Um, we had a carpet of acorns this last year. Um, when I say carpet, I mean literally like every square inch was an acorn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've got about 20 oak trees in the back and they just, you know, launched a carpet of acorns. Yeah. Um, and, and remembering you said all on a third of an acre or so is that, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of tree coverage <laughs> and a pool <laughs> and you're, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's actually really interesting because I have some, so we've lived in our home almost 18 years and, We've got these beautiful dogwoods and some flowering trees that we lost almost about two thirds of our shrubs this year. I don't know what happened. We had mm -hmm. to dig them out. And a lot of the trees you're seeing a lot of, they're just, they're aged, they need some love. And so to hear that it could potentially be really beneficial for my beautiful dogwood, you know, in my front yard and, and keep her f flourishing, you know um yeah or, you're gonna love that so yeah. that's what i say about how to treat the the most effective place where in my experience plants receive the best benefit of nutrition is in what i call the drip line you know if, if you if you have a misting rainfall on the bush or the tree wherever that water drips off as the leaves pull it down to that outside drip line i scatter about a six to eight inch wide um level of extra grow in that drip line mm -hmm. and the plant thrives from that so almost so, like a circle around the that perimeter exactly that, yeah yep and then and the longer you want it to last the the wider your line would be so if you're doing just one season treatment do about an eight inch width if you want it to be there for two three years do a two or three foot width around your tree line and as your tree grows it'll grow into more extra grow yeah as the leaves above kind of mirror the roots below when they spread for nutrition. Now the deep water roots that are tapping that the water, the moisture are, are not what you're going for. You're going for the fine hair roots that are on the top that are gathering the nutrition from the rhizome layer. Nice. That's um, as you, I think as listeners and viewers can see, you know, you've experimented with a lot. You, you know, this, the outcome and the product um intimately you know like it, this is uh i think a a passion project as much as anything um and that's beautiful like to we can know our product but like you, the way you speak about it and the like there's definitely a, a love that comes through um for the for the outcome right and we all benefit when our plants and our trees and our our foliage around us is just so much juicier livelier bigger right bigger leaves mean better coverage for the ground beneath like it's just so holistic is the word that comes to mind you know it's really affecting more than just oh I got one gorgeous tomato right and uh, it's it's a much wider reach it has the potential for a, a wider reach than, than just. Oh, well, it does. Family. And it's, and it's about, you see it in the wildlife as well. Uh, we have so many nesting pairs of birds now. Uh, let's see. We had last year, we had three Cardinals, two Blue Jay families. I don't know, five or six Finch families. Mm -hmm. We've got wild road runners running through. We've got spiny lizards. We've got chameleons. We've got armadillos and skunks and possums. I say we live in a little residential subdivision up on a hilltop yeah. and yet we've got, you know, we've got dragonflies and damselflies and, and it's interesting. You'll see migrating birds, they'll come flying over and then they'll kind of do a circle over us and then they'll move on. But it's, you can really watch, you know, you'll watch them and they'll, there's some, something is attracted, you know, something that wildlife is attracted to and they like to evaluate uh, the health of what's growing here. I mean, we haven't used any form of pesticide or chemical additive in close to a decade at this point. 
and it, it you see it you see the results yeah. and uh that's good for us it's good for the pets in the area it's good for the wildlife it's good for our children and i look at it as our children's 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 children i want what they grow to be healthy and nutritious and flavorful to have a better life than the path we were on before this yeah so that's the goal that's wonderful uh and so many have never even tasted really really good healthy nutritious food like i would say the vast oh. majority of people i know have never even tasted it oh what's amazing I, I i used to say i hated arugula because all i ever ate was grocery store arugula i started growing it here at home and now it's so amazing um i actually one of the things we do is we'll go out and harvest the arugula blossoms and those arugula flowers are so delicate they make an amazing tea you just mm -hmm. take the blossoms, you turn them into a tea, and now you've got this really high-noted, almost peppery, sweet tea. Yeah. It's 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 amazing. And the arugula leaves themselves have so much flavor, they don't have any of the bitterness that you yeah. get or metallic bitterness that I was tasting in store-grown arugula. And our arugula grows to like three feet tall. Wow. So yeah. it's not like you just cut it off. It's just, we just go out and, and harvest a few leaves and bring them in. So you're constantly just, I, I don't know, most, most of our plants, um, all I'm harvesting is the leaves or the fruit or the flower because I don't, they grow so healthy that the stalks are so strong um, that they get bark on them. <laughs> so our basil gets bark on it. Our oregano yeah. and our thyme, they get bark on it. So you, it's not like you see at the grocery store where you get a, a strip of oregano six inches long and you throw the whole thing in the soup. Or it'd be like throwing toothpicks in the soup. For us, the oregano leaves get, oh, about the size of my thumbnail. So, you know, about yeah. half an inch wide now. And you can just strip the leaves off and the plant keeps growing. Nice. So it's a whole different methodology behind gardening as well. As you go out, take a basket with you, harvest a little oregano, harvest a little thyme, grab some arugula, a little yeah. bit of leaf lettuce remain, a few onion scallions, you walk back in, you cook dinner. Yeah. That's a heck of a lot lower footprint on the environment than getting your car and going to the grocery store. Not to mention the trucks that it took to get there. And, the and if we all did it, what <laughs> you grew up in a farm community. What happens when you harvested too many cucumbers? Um, well, you made pickles and, <laughs> and, and then and you probably gave some to the one person near you who didn't also have too many cucumbers. There was just, there was abundance at some point, you know, if, if it was a good season, it would go back to the earth and it would feed into the next year, you know? Um, but yeah, you ate a lot of it. Stop, <laughs> and when did we stop taking the seed from that, which we grow and putting them back into the ground? You know, I, I can't speak for others. I so I direct sow everything into my little garden plot that I've been trying for 17 summers to bring back to health, to any level of health. Um, and I get I get um, volunteers from that and I eat the leaves. Uh, I rarely get fruit, but I eat a lot of the leaves over the last couple of years. Um, I might get like one one squash or one pumpkin or, or one melon plant, you know, um, the soil is heavy clay and very depleted, you know, and it's taken a lot of love. And so I am so going to do the extra grow challenge in those two boxes and see what we can do. Plus what's on my deck plus what's, you know, yeah. What, when, when I, when I grew up, we would harvest the seeds for the next year. I, maybe that's where you were going, right? We would harvest the best of the seeds and and then you would just go next season, right? Except for the few things that maybe weren't prone to that. Um, there were some things that we still would order seeds for the next year. Maybe you wanted to try a different variety or something, you know, but um, yeah. So where do people get extra grow? Where do, where do they get it? Well, the best way for us is to get it from extragrow.com. <laughs> uh, that way we don't have to pay somebody else to market it. 
but we are uh, available retail. Um, obviously, we're, we're on Amazon, which means Amazon gets the profit. We just get the volume. We're on homedepot.com, which means Home Depot gets the profit. We just get the volume. Yeah. But the reason we're on these other sites like Amazon and Home Depot, even though we don't make a real margin from it, I mean, shipping a bag of Extragro right now is costing $10.60 to ship it across the United States. Right. And um, uh, it's, you know, shipping is crazy. I mean, yeah. our bag of Extragro, we're selling for $24.95. So we just recently got rid of paying for shipping because we can no longer afford to do so. It went. It used to be it was six dollars and forty cents to ship a bag of extra girl around the United States, and now it's ten dollars and sixty cents. Change in a year. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, things are changing rapidly. So extra girl will change along with it. We want to keep our price as low as we possibly can, in order to get as much abundance into the ground as possible. But right. that's why we say extragrow.com. That's the best place to buy. But if you want to see a bunch of really cool reviews, go out to homedepot.com. And there's close to 300 reviews and go read them. Take, take a few minutes and, and there's three star, four star and five star reviews. I think there's 11, three star and then 270 or something, four and five star reviews. Yeah. Um, and people love it. They, they'll write paragraphs after paragraph or there'll be full letters out there. Of people yeah, I are, actually, uh, I did that. I, yeah. I went and looked at the site uh, to see you know, and it, he's not joking. There's just rave reviews about this product, but um, it's that says a lot, you know, in a short period of time. And that's just one one channel, you know, of where to find this. All well, most people, people don't understand that the big marketers like Amazon and Home Depot, they're a pay to play environment. Yeah. So if you try to buy us on Home Depot.com, you have to go to like page four because we don't have 15 other products that we sell under our brand and they automatically list whoever their biggest brand carriers are first. Yeah. Not by the reviews or any other way. So if you don't pay to be on the front page, you don't get there. And of course, that's not what we do. We just wanted the exposure to get some independent third-party reviews so that we could say, refer them, say, look, this is what other people think. This isn't just Photoshopped pictures. This is the yeah. real results. Yeah. So try it for yourself and and enjoy. Yeah. And go to extragrow.com and and uh I put your actual order in. <laughs> and we'll well and we'll ship nationwide. That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um is there anything else? I mean, I know like I know we could cover a lot of grounds. Um as I would love to ask one further question purely from my own situation because I know a lot of people by the last few years. So um, I have been attempting to do the back to Eden wood chipping sort of approach. Right. And so when you talk about the topsoil layer, um, if I bring in extra grow, am I drawing the wood chips back and then yes. scatter? You want to get it under your mulch layer. Yeah. And um, and frankly, have you ever heard of the technology technique called lasagna composting? No, but I think it's probably kind of like right now my garden consists of I'm guessing this is what you mean. So tell me if I'm wrong. I've done chips for two or three years and then I'm like, well, we're still not there. So I'm going to put some dirt on top and maybe we'll do some more chips because it seems to help. And is that what you mean or something? That's else? part of it. And you can also add in um, your vegetable scraps, yeah. uh, lawn scraps and so on. Now, of course, yeah. if you end up with a lot of grass seed, you're going to end up with a lot of grass growing. So you have to be careful what kind of biologic matter you're using. But for instance, for me, I have a lot of oak leaves at the end of every season and I can mulch those and throw those in uh, into my beds. And so I'll throw a, for the winter time, I'll throw a whole layer of, you know, leaves and, and into the beds and then cover those, I throw a few handfuls of extra grow on top. Yeah. And by spring, that's all extra grow is also a compost enhancer. So yeah. if you do compost a compost bin or whatever, and you throw a handful of extra grow in once in a while, what it will do is it'll accelerate the microbial and fungal growth to break down the composting faster. Uh, for instance, 
Um, one of the things I do is I, I we we drink a lot of coffee around here. Mm -hmm. So uh, with, you know, four kids and the two of us and schedules that go all kinds of crazy haywire, uh, we tend to drink a lot of coffee. So um, we always combine our eggshells and our coffee and a handful of extra grow. And it just throw we throw it into little five gallon buckets or whatever. And it'll just sit there. And after a few months, it's topsoil. We throw that into the, uh, into the, the beds that go on top where those leaves were just so we're not wasting that biological mass. Yeah. We just are accelerating it. And so you're getting X in our area, which is heavy clay. We're always looking for more biomatter to break up the clay. Uh, our yard is about 85% clay by weight. So it's, I mean, I've literally with my, my younger kids gone out, harvested the clay and turned it into little hand formed earrings for the kids and stuff. <laughs> it's, it, you literally can do that. <laughs> so it's very heavy, thick clay, like what you're dealing with. Yeah. And the key is, is you want to get that aeration into place. You want to get the microbes going. You're going to see heavy duty earthworms growing and yeah. you'll see life blossom. So yeah, that's the secret. So lasagna composting can literally be scrape an area, you know, four foot by four foot, throw all your kitchen scraps and some extra leaves, throw some wood chips or topsoil over the top of that. And then, and throw in a handful of extra grow, move on. And yeah. what will happen is, uh, you know, I'd like along my back bed of my, uh, of my house, I'll do an area uh, about four foot by four foot. And then when that one's full, I'll, covered over and I'll move to the next area and move to the next area. So that's my form of composting. I don't, I don't spin it and everything else. I just yeah. have a place that it's going to go. That's beautiful. Well, I, uh, I think it's great. I hope you keep sharing and anything I can do to support this. I think it's actually like my heart says, Oh, this is the thing that's going <laughs> to let me get what I want in my own backyard. Um, do you have any, um, I don't know, what, one last thing to say to just inspire people to, to take some action? I know you've said like just a few pots if you're just on a balcony, uh, but somebody mm -hmm. who's maybe um, you know, they're they have like this much experience they want to. And then there's somebody who's been trying, but unsuccessful. Those black thumbs, one word of advice or one, one little bit of advice to each. Okay. For the beginner, I say, start with your song herbs, parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme. I add in basil and oregano. And the reason is, is if you can just grow those fresh with extra grow and you add them to your meals regularly, you're getting incredible doses of antivirals and antibiotics and your health will improve dramatically just with those herbs. And they're very easy to grow. Oregano, thyme are all perennials in almost all parts of America. They're perennial herbs. So you grow them and once you get them started, you can chop them off for wintertime Take all those with you, harvest them, dehydrate them, whatever you're going to do, turn them into your own cooking herbs, and they'll start back fresh the next season without any extra work. Just again, a handful of extra grow, non-chlorinated water. The, the, there's a huge difference in chlorinated tap water versus water that's been just set outside into a pot for 24 hours before you water it. It allows the chlorine to evaporate, or if you want to get into structured water with running it through an RV filter to you know, activated charcoal to dechlorinate it or use a structured water, uh, free form water, uh, like the grow pro, uh, the Jason cells on void space tech.org. Uh, those are all quality enhancements to the water itself that goes on to help the plants thrive to the more experienced, uh, gardener. I highly recommend that you look at your light, your timing of your spacing. Um, plants on extra grow grow significantly taller and significantly wider and broader than you'll expect. So if you're used to planting every two feet, I would say at least plant double that every four feet. Uh, my pink girl tomato plant was an indeterminate variety of sauce tomato. You know, they grow really thick. Ours um, had no liquid in them at all. They were pure meat. Wow. And 
Uh, that one tomato plant grew to be uh, nine feet tall, um, 20 feet wide, and about six feet deep. Wow. Uh, that's a single stalk indeterminate tomato. Uh, I was out in the backyard with burlap and running strings to keep it up off the ground to keep, you know, keep the tomato plant from uh, picking up a fungus or something because it was growing so quickly we couldn't keep up. Um, and also the other thing I'd say is if you decide to do cucumbers or squash, make sure you have an inordinate amount of space. My wife won't even let me grow cucumbers anymore. Um, we I planted our cucumber. We went on vacation for two weeks. I came back and I'd had some guy lines in for the tomato plant. Well, that cucumber went 19 feet vertical up into the oak tree and it went 60 feet wide into the shrubs, into the neighbor's yard, all the way down towards our driveway. And she's like, no more cucumbers. Wow. So <laughs> like, you have to Jurassic have Jurassic cucumber land, you know. Oh, and the um, other thing is you'll see so much rhizome enhancement. Um, cucumbers, uh, you need gloves to pick them. Um, they get, the rhizomes are so... Uh, or like cactus thorns. Um, okay. The you, prickly, you, the pricklies. Yeah. 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 It's beyond prickly. They're like little needles. So interesting. Uh, harvest early. <laughs> yeah. One thing we didn't touch on, but I remember you saying, and I was really encouraging my friend in Arizona to get it. I mean, we all need it, but the fact that it is, um, that it retains the water, you kind of touched on that mm -hmm. is the bag will expand, but water retention you know use a good water as much as you're able but the the fact that you probably need to water less at least for part of the process is well let me be clear on that differently i actually i've actually had a failure on that to where um i almost got myself in trouble <laughs> um i used it on my wife's uh, some of her ivy and um our sprinkler system uh one of the zones went out and I walked out and was like, oh my gosh, what happened? It was like all drying up. And it's true, extra grow enhances water capability and improves drought tolerance. It improves freeze tolerance as well um, because the plants are so much stronger. However, plants also grow much more quickly than normal. Hmm. Plants require a lot of water when they're growing quickly. Sure. And her ivy in the back was growing about a foot a day. And so the sprinkler system went out. I didn't notice for a couple of days and I'm going out there and the whole thing was shriveling up and drying because it was desiccating itself. It was growing so fast. So the tips were still green, but it was desiccating all the older leaves because it was trying to grow new. Gotcha. So yeah, I was able to fix the system and get it all back up and running. Yeah. But if plants are going to grow twice as quickly, they need twice as much water. Yeah. But it also is a desiccation on the top layer. So it doesn't dehydrate as quickly and it holds more moisture in the, in the soil than it would otherwise. So it's a balance. So all I say is when you're growing with extra grow, use your eyes, yeah. pay attention. Notice that the leaf structure will get there are more curvature in every leaf. I believe that helps it collect more light. So it grows faster. The soil behaves differently than what you're used to seeing. You will see earthworms that, well, in my yard, they can get to be somewhere around 12 <laughs> inches and yeah. they can fool you into thinking they're baby snakes, even though they're not. Um, yeah. I've had them as big as my pinky. And uh, I've actually went to move one out of the way one time and it wrapped itself around my wrist and slapped me in the wrist. And I thought I'd been bitten by a snake and it was just a strong earthworm. Wow. So um, wow. they can thrive, but. Uh, you don't worry about pests because pests go for weak plants. Okay. Um, my daughter kept kept a whole pill bug um, uh, collection, several thousand pill bugs growing yeah. in a little box inside my greenhouse. So a weak plant would be eaten, but a healthy plant they didn't touch. But anytime a leaf would fall off or you'd harvest some and part of it would break and fall to the ground, that next day it was gone because they were... It was a healthy, balanced ecosystem. So watch nature thrive, allow nature to be nature and the healthy plants will survive. And if they're not healthy, they won't. Yeah. So try to grow native. That's the other thing. Try to grow native plants, native for your biome. They'll yeah. be more successful than that variety from Kansas trying to be grown in Florida. Right, 
Right. Yeah. And, and that takes a little bit of research and, and connection, but it's worth it. It's worth making that connection to, to the place you live in. Um, and you know, if you start looking up, uh, heirloom seeds, mm -hmm. uh, there's a great Facebook site that's coming popular now, take a plant, leave a plant. Mm -hmm. Um, there's several of those local, they're starting to grow around where they're trading local plants with people. Uh, there's also trading of heirloom seeds. If you yeah. can trade heirloom seeds with local growers that are successful with their seed in their garden, and then, so you can grow and trade with others. I've probably got, you know, a hundred different genome seed collection of heirloom seeds now from yeah. other local growers that are successful. And if you build that network within a few years, you'll have a seed bank of your own that yeah. you know grows locally and you'll meet a lot of friends that are perhaps like-minded people and yeah. you'll find, well, it's like I got milk chocolate bell peppers last year oh, from me. a friend of mine. Um, never seen a milk chocolate bell pepper before, but they're really <laughs> interesting. So um, there's all kinds yeah. of cool things you'll meet and people you'll meet and, and you get to experience, uh, Sorry, you get to experience the way the earth wants to grow. Hold on one second. I got you all choked up, didn't I? There we go. We're back. Um, yeah, I know even my local library, they ha have started making seed exchange. Um, oh, that's excellent. Packets, you know, so there's this little box by the front door that people can come and exchange seeds. Um, you know, that makes me remember um, uh, there's a group here locally that's talked about making seed bombs for wildflower seeds and native plants. And they're talking about incorporating extra grow into the seed bomb. You know, they're making them out of like little uh, eggshells and they uh, put the seeds and the extra grow and a little bit of dirt into the eggshell. And then yeah. they cover it with a little wax and they go around and they throw them out into the wildlands and it cracks open and, that's... and seeds the seeds, wildflowers throughout Texas. Oh, so. that's neat. That's neat, man. Yeah. All the many things that we're going to have fun uh learning about exploring you know the many ways and if somebody's listening and you know you get some extra grow and be sure to share it with people you know I haven't even used it yet but I've seen the outcome and like I just have this innate like sense that this is going to be good I've met David he's got such a heart for this he's um make sure that you're sharing it because our, our soil needs all the love. Our bodies need the love, you know, we're ready for it. This is a piece of the beautiful shift we're making in, in humanity at this time. It's right on time. You know, it's right on time. And my hands up, right. <laughs> Testify, you know, and I know that I'll be coming back uh, as I, we're getting into gardening season here. My goal has always been to have a year round garden of some sort, even if it's just a few pots in the cold seasons, you know, um, and the, and seeing now how this might actually help me sustain my own plants because we get such heat here. It always kills everything. They get to a point and then they, no matter what you do, they just in my yard, other people are fine, you know, um, I, I look forward to that. And so share, share the love uh, when you start playing with this product. Um, $25, $35 sounds like with shipping ish. Is that, and that's going to go a long way. That's going to, that's going to one, one or two bags of that will probably for the average Joe yeah, the cost of shipping actually goes down by the bag, depending on how many bags you order. Yeah. Most customers will buy one bag and then they turn around a couple of weeks later and buy about four. Yeah. So that's that's just our typical pattern. They want, it takes anywhere from three to 10 days to see massive results using extra yeah. growth. So people will try out a bag and then they'll turn around and they'll buy more. So that's, you know, that's just our typical model. I do want to mention one more thing. Yes. Um, we have created a foundation. Uh, it's a IRS 501c3 recognized public charity called the Extra Grow Foundation Incorporated. Uh, you can check out extragrowfoundation.org. And our goal is to teach children from fourth grade throughout college the 
premium organic agricultural methodology. And we plan to certify them as premium organic soil engineers and then help them with USDA grants for local farms and urban farms as rural and ur urban farms. There's a whole new brand of the United States Department of Agriculture around urban farming. And believe it or not, you can register as an urban farm with as little as one one hundredth of an acre of land, as long as your intent is to create a commercial marketable product. Then you open yourself up for U.S. Department of Agriculture grants to start your farm. So you want to put a greenhouse, you can get paid to put in a greenhouse if you plan to grow herbs for your local community and just sell them at a farmer's market once a year, you qualify. So something that simple could give your family abundance into agriculture. There's lots of paperwork, but that's what we're working towards is learning that paperwork, teaching it to others, helping children. It, it's really not my model. It's what Steve Jobs did for Apple. He put an iPad in the hand of every child in America 20 years ago. And now all the 20 year olds won't use anything except for, I, I, you know, Apple technology. We'd love to do the same with premium organic agriculture, because okay. when you grow spearmint or oregano or parsley or basil, anything on extra grow, the flavor is so much better than you can get anywhere else. Yeah. We want to put that flavor in the hands of mouth of children. So when they're adults, the expectation has been raised. Yeah. Now, how do we improve the quality of nutrition through in America? We create a demand. And yeah. so that's what our foundation's about. Well, that's wonderful. And so people can reach out to you at that email address if they want to, or yes. that website and get, you know, in contact with you or find out what programs are happening. All of Exactly. That. We're building the programs now with uh, areas in uh, Texas and Colorado um, to do that. And we're looking for others. I've been in conversation with folks there in Tennessee as well, um, uh, up in Northern Tennessee, up by the border of Kentucky. Uh, we're looking at several opportunities throughout the country, kind of hubs, if you will, of premium organic yeah. to build the the grow, to build the processing, and then to build the end use uh, product uh, that'll be known as premium organic. So that's where we're headed. All right. Well, let's let's head there. Let's celebrate all along the way, and um, you know, and enjoy the the bounty that comes from from our gardens. <laughs> and the new friendships we're going to make and thank you for your questions and i and i can't wait to see your pictures and and this and to uh watch you try to uh explain the flavors because um it, it, oh it's that'll be explain. easy oh it tastes like something <laughs> this tastes like something <laughs> wow oh, you know what's really funny is when you give it to somebody that's not used to eating vegetables at all yeah um, I've have a friend that I, I think he thinks a vegetable is, you know, Skittles. So, um, because they're colorful, he thinks that's, yeah. you know, <laughs> so he ate some, uh, arugula out of my garden for the first time. And, and, uh, he was so shocked. He, he couldn't understand. He, he was like, I can't, I can't handle this much flavor in one bite. Um, wow. you know, so it's a, it's a retraining. It, it just yeah. teaches you what a palate can be. Yeah. So. And the more your tongue has been, you know, obliterated by, you know, fake, fake foods and, you know, chemical based stuff, the longer the retraining probably is, but there's an, your body's wisdom will likely have an inherent curiosity that will take you one more bite at a time. Right. Because yeah, your body's yeah. going to know. That's that kinesiology. Different. Exactly. We've, you know, uh, seen expressions of, um, asking your body if this is good for me or not, yeah. um, and getting and waiting for that response and, and, uh, you'll get overwhelming yeses. So. Yes. Well, beautiful. Well, thank David, you so thank much you. for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, be sure to share this video or this podcast, wherever you're watching or listening with, someone we all have a black thumb gardener in in our circles and share it with somebody who's gonna really be inspired to to take some action for themselves and whether it's learning how to grow from the very first for the very first time 
or giving them hope again, you know, uh, and even even if you know very successful gardeners, share this with them and see what see what oh. they're curious about, right? Yeah, My parents master are... gardeners. Master gardeners are one of our biggest. You know that they love the product. You know that certified organic master gardeners at local agricultural extensions. Uh, you'll see. Um, there's a community garden project right now in Parsons, Kansas, and the uh, the picture on the websites, a gentleman. Uh, showing a young child how to use extra grow and if you'll look at what his um, his uh, logo is on his shirt it's the ex agricultural extension for Kansas State University so we're getting the word out there it's just Good. a, a Good. case by case one person at a time process so Beautiful. thank you again for the questions and for sharing with your listeners all right well thank you David all right y'all have a good day blessings